Here's another devotional for Missionary Alliance Church for this week after Easter. In this uh, string of uh, communications since we had to shelter in place. That's the phrase that's in my mind this morning as prompted by Pastor Mitch Kim from the Alliance Church in Wheaton, Illinois. Many of us in the country are sheltered in place, and we are here in Sioux Falls because of our age, personally. Uh, we're supposed to be safer at home, and we're supposed to stay home, and certain ones of us are told to shelter in place. And so I turn to Psalm 91, <laughs> where it says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We need shelter, uh, food, clothing, and shelter. Those are the top three. And so it's nice to have that provided to us. And the scripture says that the Lord God Almighty, the Most High, will provide this kind of relief for us in the shadow of the Almighty, safe from the glare of the sun or the elements or whatever might be coming down upon us. He can provide that. We have a shelter in the time of storm, <laughs> the old song says. I will say of the Lord, verse 2, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. There's no question that this particular virus is very deadly worldwide. We're seeing that in our states. We're seeing the numbers day after day. God can save us, very practically speaking, from the deadly pestilence. In verse 4 it says, He will cover you with his feathers. Now there's quite an image of the Lord God Almighty, like a bird in a nest protecting its young ones were covered by his feathers, were covered. Uh, for the first time the other day, I was asked to put on a mask in a certain place, and we're seeing more and more people wearing masks, covering themselves. But ultimately, God is our covering, and we seek him for protection. And under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Great is your faithfulness. Verse 5, you will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. We see the numbers, we see the reports from the different states and the regions of our country, and we hear about different hot spots. And there's a promise here of protection that even though it's affecting many, many others, it will not come near you. However, I'm sure that many of you know of people, family members, acquaintances, connections here and there, uh, and some near. And in our own town here, uh, the retirement center just over here behind us had their first case of an employee uh, that was... Uh, shown to have the virus and could be contagious. We take walks around that huge place all the time. So it's near. It's around. <laughs> There's a threat out there. And we're all concerned about this. Uh, for a lot of us, a lot of you, life has been going on as normal, pretty normal. And you don't feel the nearness of this threat. But whether you do or you don't, uh, we ha all have a sense that we are relying on God for our physical health and for the well-being of the economy uh, and, and all that is around us. It's just such a weird time, as some have pointed out. Verse 9 goes on, though, But if you say, The Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, your shelter, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent your house that you have to stay in, in which you have to shelter, your your frame, your tent, your earthly tent, your body. This is quite a, quite a promise. Uh, verse 11, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. 
and who knows what's behind all this, um, what our enemies or what the enemy has against us and anything that comes against us and our well-being and our freedom to assemble and and all the rest. Uh, it's a great threat, but the Lord can trample on those great lions and serpents because he loves me, says the Lord in verse 14. I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. So that's what's up to us to do, to continue to acknowledge the name of the Lord and trust in him. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. It doesn't necessarily say that he uh, keeps all the trouble away. We're not immune to trouble, but he will be with us in trouble. I will deliver him. I get him through it and honor him. And so we honor the Lord in, in some strange fashion. He honors us. And then the last promise, verse 16, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's the main thing, right? Salvation. To, to be with the Lord forever, to gain eternity, eternal life, heaven, uh, to be saved from our sins and, and know that uh, all these light and momentary troubles don't match up against the greatest promise of all, that Jesus says, I'm going to go away and I'm preparing a place for you and I come back and I'm going to take you to be with me forever. I'm the way, the truth, and life. I am your salvation. He is our Savior. So that's the main thing and we count on that. And then all the rest, what he does for us in this life, we thank him, we glorify him, we praise him, we exalt him. We uh, just continue to honor him and trust him. He's our rescuer. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to deliver us and rescue us from all these threats and these perils that are in this life. And this is a big one now that's come upon the whole world and upon our country and our regions. We continue to turn to you, Lord, to get us through, to deliver us, to show us our priorities in life. And <clears throat> first of all, to know you, to follow you, to to be saved and, and to take as many people with us as we can. We pray for good response to all these threats and that people are turning to you and that you'd use us as a church as instruments of your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.